Welcome back to part four of this tutorial series. This is the home stretch. This is it, the conclusion. We're just going to add a sun to get some reflection on the floor. And then we're going to tweak our render settings and get the final image we like. And that's it. Congratulations. We made it this far. If you have any questions, let me know. And let's begin. So let's, let's go back to image one. Let's cycle through these real quick. Go one through eight on the number row and just kind of get a feel for the changes that you've made and how they've improved overall. Okay, so we'll go back to slot one. And now let's, let's add a sun that's separate from that HDRI. Let's go shift A, light, sun. Let's bring it over here. Position doesn't really matter. It's really just the angle. So let's go into front view. Turn this bugger like this. And you see it? See it hitting the floor? Try to get it at that same kind of low angle that the sun is actually coming in at there. Let's change the color of it to match this yellowish color. It's like a yellow orange. Bring it right about there and bring the brightness down. Now let's turn it from top view. The reason that we can't see the reflection from the sun when we turn it in the windows like this is because the, the sunlight's not going through the glass properly because of the EV settings. So if we just change this window over to cycles, it will actually look fine when we rotate the sun in there. Now we can actually see the reflection. We can line that up with the sun reflection on the water and now we should be good to go now the visibility of the sun through the glass that's just because the angle here was too low the lower the angle is the relative position of the sun will be visible in the glass so if you can see the actual sphere of the sun through the window just make this angle steeper until that sun disappears above there and then we won't actually see that artificial sun in our render just the reflection of it on the floor if the angle you have it at is showing the reflection of this part of the window frame just fine-tune it a little bit so you get that that black bar out of the view but you still can't quite see the artificial sun. That's the sweet spot. And then let's press F12 and do another render. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. The reflection on the floor is nice. We don't see the artificial sun through the glass. I think overall the scene is just... Uh, Still a tiny bit too bright. Let's switch to slot number six. And then in our world settings, let's reduce the strength of the HDRI by 50% more. So we'll cut the strength from 0.5 to 0.25. And then let's do another render with F12. Okay, and that looks good. I think the darker interior makes it feel moodier and a little warmer, more soothing, more comforting. We can toggle between slots 5 and 6, get a little feel for that. You might like it somewhere in between. Just mess around and put that strength of the HDRI where you want it for your final image. I'm going to go with the .25. And then let's do a higher quality render and really get a feel for how this finished scene will look. 
Let's switch to slot 7. And then let's change our render settings. We're going to go back to 100% resolution. We can find that in the scene tab over here. We'll put this back up to 100. And now let's do a higher sample count. Let's double the samples, see what we get for quality and render time. Let's press F12. Alright, so render time for me was just under a minute and a half. Obviously this is going to look a little better because it's a bigger, higher resolution image. We'll go to slot 8 and then we will double our sample size. And if you, I mean the math is not terribly difficult to do in your head, but if you want, you can do the math right in the blender field that you're typing into. We can just go 64 times 2. At 128, let's hit F12 and see what we get. Okay, so render time there was just over 2 minutes. Now let's toggle slots 7 and 8 and see what the differences are. Next we should see, we'll go to slot 1, we should see what we get when we go even higher and see if we start to bring out some real significant detail and again if it justifies the render time. So we'll press F12 and see what we get. Okay so render time on that one was just under 4 minutes and now let's toggle to slot 8 and then compare 1 and 8. You can always really crank the sample count up and then just go to bed while the render is happening and you don't have to worry. You can wake up in the morning and have as sharp looking an image as possible. For now though, uh, I think this is good. I'm going to use this as my final render and that will be it. So I hope you found this tutorial series helpful. I hope that you learned some things from it and I hope that you like your final image. The goal of this tutorial series is to show you that it's relatively simple to make an attractive image that looks somewhat photorealistic and hopefully something that you can uh, put on your phone and then show to your friends or family as a beginner project and say I made this in a computer and doesn't it look real and um, something about like reflection on wood floors is always a nice feature and if you can replicate that in Blender, it'll make you feel pretty good about what you can create early on without a whole lot of work. There's not an incredible amount of special techniques involved in a little project like this. It's relatively straightforward and uh, hopefully you're seeing that there's a lot you can do with not a lot of time investment and not a lot of difficult, challenging work and still get a nice looking result. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. I'll be happy to answer them. I'm sure there's probably some things that I missed or left out, so I'll be happy to elaborate on stuff. And um, thanks very much for watching, and stay tuned for more tutorial scenes like this in the future. Have a great day.